Hi, I'm Heavy D, and I hate Nissan Z cars. It's not true, I actually don't. I have no problem with those cars. I actually think they're pretty cool. However, we did release a video on Sunday that kind of made it look like we hate the cars, which is why I'm here. I'm here in what my guys like to call the make it right corner. This is where I go to explain myself. You guys may remember uh, I sat here after the Freedom 500 and tried to explain the situation there. And I'm sure I'll be here a lot more in the future because it's just sometimes hard to communicate what you really wanna say versus what people understand, which is why we're here in this beautiful corner. So guys, let's go back to Sunday. Sunday, uh, we released a video which was live for three or four hours before we ended up deleting it. And normally we don't delete anything. Normally we try to leave everything up. We only delete something if we feel like it's causing serious you know, trauma or damage to us or somebody else. Or in this case, if we feel like we could have done a much better job explaining ourselves, which is what I'm about to do. Uh, a few reasons why the video got released uh, prematurely. Number one, I was out of town. I was out of service. I had no cell service. We were down in Lake Powell with the family and uh, the guys here were working with basically what we left them with. We had to get a video posted on Sunday because we try to you know, keep content rolling um, at least once a week, if not more, and Sunday's usually the day that we post. So with that said, I was not able to basically kind of review the final edit of the video to make sure that the message that I wanted to get across was exactly the way that I wanted to get it across. The team did a fantastic job on the video. Everything turned out, it was, it was a great video, other than the fact that we smashed 70 cars that have an extremely loyal following, many of you. So that's why we're here. We're gonna talk about the circumstances surrounding this video, how we got there, why we were there, what, co what forced us to you know, get rid of these cars in this manner, all right? So guys, if you happen to miss the video, which went live on Sunday, which most of you probably did because uh, obviously we took it down fairly quickly, although it was getting a lot of views. I mean, that thing was like quarter million views in a few hours, which uh, obviously people wanted to know what was going on. But since you may have missed it, or maybe you saw it and just wanna see it again, throughout this video, we're gonna be doing flashbacks to the original video showing the process of how we had to scrap these cars, what we did with them, where we took them, um, how brittle some of them were when they got smashed and different things like that. So. If you see a moment that's like a little bit flashbacky, that's because we're throwing back to the original video to help you understand the context of what we're talking about now. So let's start at the beginning. My buddy Harry reaches out to me, sends me a screenshot, literally just a Google Earth screenshot, that says, hey, I got these cars on this property. They gotta be gone in like 24, 48 hours. How much will you give me for them? And he's like, but you have to respond in one minute, otherwise I'm gonna let somebody else do it. He was basically kind of toying with me. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Oh boy, today <laughs> we're in for a doozy. Uh, and I know I always say that and I usually mean it when I say it. I'm for real. Uh, you guys saw the last video, right? Where we jumped in and, and spent $8,000 to buy a bunch of scrap metal, turned around, uh, made a bunch of money on it. It was a great deal. You guys remember the beginning of that video though, we asked a question, right? And we said whoever got closest to the actual scrap weight that we took to the scrap yard, not including some of the trucks and stuff that we kept, just the actual scrap weight. The number was 156, 400. So if you had a guess that was that or less, you can't go over, send me a screenshot, prove to me how soon you did it after the video was posted and you might be the winner of last week's video giveaway. But now we move on to this. So my good friend, Harry, texted me the other day and he said, hey, we're expanding our gravel pit operation and uh, the property that we're expanding onto has a bunch of old cars. Here's a screenshot, literally just a quick little screenshot. And he said, you have to let me know within the next 60 seconds how much you pay me for that. So he was testing me. Don't push me. So I was like, all right, I got, a, I got one minute to respond. I was like, I'll give you 7,500 bucks. I don't know, I, I, I that didn't have time to count the cars, look at the address, anything. But I saw a handful of cars. So $7,500 was just what I, uh, I spent and now where you just got here. Looked at it, kind of glanced, got a rough idea. So I was like, oh, there's more than 20 cars there. Scrap's kind of high right now. I was like, oh, I'll give you 7,500 bucks. We'll see what happens. Because I know Harry won't lead me astray. When I made that agreement to buy those cars, I had no idea what this was. I didn't know if it was a full junkyard full of all sorts of different cars. If it was, I literally just had no idea. And then we show up the next day to do the job, right? 
we show up ready to basically scrap these cars. And I find that they are all, almost every single one, was either Nissan or Datsun Z series, anywhere from 200 to 300. I don't think there's anything higher than the 300 series in there, um, which is, if you're not familiar, the Datsun Z series is one of the most popular, most you know exciting sports cars that ever came to the US. And the reason for that is because it was built in Japan, right? Basically Nissan and Datsun got together and figured out a way to bring uh, a Datsun version of the Nissan Z to the States. And that was the first generation uh, Z. And it was awesome. It was a uh, fast, uh, efficient, fun to drive, super cool car. And then they rolled out the second generation and the third generation and they kept rolling out better and better cars like they started adding turbos they had these these like ripping uh straight six smaller engines that just had like tons of power cool transmissions tons of options like these cars were very well thought out i don't know if i have ever seen the type of loyalty to this car specifically than I have to anything else ever in my entire life i mean i'm telling you people are religiously passionate about their z which i can't blame them like I said, it's a cool car and they're really fun to modify, fun to drive. I've drifted Zs, I've done, I've, I enjoy those cars. Flat out, rear wheel drive, lots of power in a light car. Who wouldn't enjoy it? So basically what happened was when we got there to get rid of the cars, Harry kind of let me know the rules and, and the terms of what had to happen. They had to be gone in like little, little over 24 hours um, because he's getting ready to do a big business here on this property. It's a big commercial site that's worth millions and millions of dollars. And these, they've been working for months and months and months to try to get permits to get rid of these cars because none of these cars have titles. I'm telling you, not one single title. Basically, uh, we had to work with the Utah Motor Vehicle Enforcement to come out and get junk permits. So essentially, that means an officer from the state comes out and says, yep, this car is junk. It's never going to be driven on the road again. Either it was stolen or it was an insurance write-off or it's not roadworthy, whatever it is, they come and write permits and say, here you go. Your car is now officially a piece of junk, which is how most scrapyards work because if you don't have a title, you have to have some sort of legal uh, way to move that car around. So once we found that out, we were like, okay, well, they're never going to be driven again. None of them are going to be restored. And then once we started digging a little bit deeper, we realized, oh yeah, these, like, these cars are not going to be restored and there's really not that much left to save on them. And the reason for that is because the previous owner of all these cars, the guy who Harry bought the land from, who needed to get them moved, had spent the last 20 to 30 years selling parts from these very cars to people all over the world. They sold them on the internet, they sold them locally, they had people come through here. These cars had been heavily picked through. Doesn't mean that they were completely naked. Obviously, you guys saw the video. The biggest complaints I saw was the glass, should say the glass, the badges, uh, steering wheels, emblems, um, engines. Things like that where people are like, oh, you got to save those. Well, there wasn't as many of those in savable condition as you might think. Some of the glass was good, but the problem with the glass is it's literally like you have to keep these cars in a pile on a piece of real estate with a full-time person constantly picking parts and pieces off of them in order to sell them. So basically the old owner said, all right, well, I've got as much value as I possibly can out of these cars. We've stripped them down to as far as, as you know, I'm willing to go, the previous owner. And so he was done. And you guys got to understand, this is a guy who really, really knows those cars. He understands them inside and out. And he was the one that was like, yep, smash them. So that makes me feel better about it because it wasn't necessarily my decision because I'm by no means a Z expert. I've restored classic vehicles, not a ton of them, but we have brought a few trucks in here that were old, classic, really cool, but needed a lot of love. And one thing that I found that when you restore a classic vehicle, it's always, always way more work than you think it's going to be. And the biggest issue that you'll find is cancerous rust, which every single one of these cars is just covered inside and out with rust guys these cars are in such worse condition than they appear in these videos it's not even funny in fact some of them are so brittle that when we picked them up with the forklift or the tractor it would literally just break in half because the unibody the underbelly of the car was just rusted away to nothing so the rust on these cars was extremely bad when you have the choice to grab one of these cars and restore it, where you're basically going to replace every sheet metal panel on the car anyways, or just go find one that's in a little bit better condition, I'll tell you this. If somebody came to me and said, hey, I'll give you 150 grand to restore one of those Zs, I wouldn't do it. I know the process, I know what it takes, and I know that I personally, I couldn't make any money even doing it for 150 grand because we would literally have to start over. Not one of these cars is a candidate for it. Go somewhere else. There's, there's other cars out there. The problem is these cars have been exposed to the elements and vandals and anything else for the last 20 to 30 years. 
pretty much all the valuable or important or hard to find components in these cars have either been A, taken off and sold, B, stolen, or C, are no good anymore. You'll see a lot of engines in the videos. From what I understand, if the car had a good engine, the owner kept it on the other side and parted the engine out for you know some decent money. If it's over on the scrap side, it means the engine was either full of water, locked up, had some sort of issues, and that's what we're dealing with. Again, guys, we don't have the time to individually go through every single car and be like, oh, this one's good, move it over here, move it over there, because supposedly that's what the previous owner had already done. Which brings me to my next point. On this property, you're gonna see kind of a dividing line. On this side of it, you're gonna see the 70 plus cars that gotta go to the scrap pile. Those cars were put there by the guy who also owns the cars over here, which are pretty much the exact same cars, but they're still in basically good enough condition to be able to part out. And that's what they're still doing. They're still selling parts and pieces um, of these cars over here. And the owner who knows these cars really well was the one who said, yep, these ones should be smashed. These ones should be saved. That wasn't our call, all right? I feel really good saying that. For me, that's like the most important part of this video because it shows that I'm not trying to come in here and be the expert, because I'm not. I'm just trying to explain to you how and why we got to where we're at now. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's still entertaining content. One thing you guys gotta understand, I don't go to the make it right corner very often. This is a very special circumstance because of the passion that I saw coming from the enthusiasts of these cars that watched the video. I had a kid email me and he's like, hey man, my dad died, he didn't leave me much, but all he left me was my, my Nissan Z and it's just like the one in your video and I love those cars, thanks so much for showing them. It hurt my feelings that you had to smash them, but I just want you to know that my Z is my pride and joy, my prized possession that my dad left me. And I was like, oh man, that's a cool story. Um, all the way to death threats. I've had people like anonymously email me and text me and be like, hey, you know, F you guys, uh, you should die and burn in hell for doing that to those cars. I've had people try to catfish us by sending us pictures of other uh, forgotten car warehouses and they're like, hey, come scrap these cars too. I'm just gonna flat out say it. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings and I'm sorry that the video did. That was not the whole purpose of the video at all, which brings us to where we're at right now. So guys, now you have a little bit better idea of why we did what we did and also why we're about to do what we're gonna do, which is the surprise I've been alluding to all video. We saved six of these cars. I did this even before I, the other video posted it because my plan was to do this in two parts. The second part was, you know, take six of these cars and give them away to lucky people or whatever. Instead, we're just gonna go like this. You ready for this? The cars are yours. They're up for grabs. They're literally parked in front of our shop right now. The address is in the video description below. Come get them. The only rules are, ready for this? You can't just go scrap them out because the whole purpose here is for you to show us the potential value that we may have missed by scrapping these cars. Uh, other rule is, you can't part them out on our property. You either have to take the whole car or nothing at all. The final rule is you can't take all six. Let's limit it to two per customer or two per whoever shows up. So the car's gonna be there. They're gonna have a little note on them with uh, Hunter or Bud's phone number. So you can call them. They'll help you load them up with the forklift and let's see what you guys can do. Now, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna follow up with everybody who picks up one of those cars and see what you did with it. I wanna find out whether it was only worth 200 bucks in scrap Remember, that's one of the rules you can't. So if you take it, you have to keep it forever and park it in your lawn. Can't get rid of it, except for as a junk permit. So I think that's all you can do with it actually is get rid of it. I don't, I'm not sure how this works, but I'm gonna follow up and see who gets the most value out of the car that they pick up from us. Whether you sell it for parts, whether you try to restore it, which please don't, cause that's not a good idea with any of these cars. Um, or whether you turn it into like uh, furniture or wall art or something. I know for a fact that many of you are way more creative than I am, especially when it comes to this specific car because you're passionate about it. So whoever does the most impressive thing, which is just gonna be basically up to my judgment, I'm gonna send you a fat prize. Like I'm not, I, I want you to show us the value here that we may have missed um, because I know there def definitely is some. Obviously we knew that going into this because of the type timeline. But guys, uh, the only other thing that you need to check is before you head out to Utah to try to pick up these cars that are parked in front of our building, read the video description below because it's gonna tell you whether or not they're still available. If there's a big text that says cars are gone, don't come. Obviously you guys get it, don't come out. So please, please, please don't email, don't call, just read the video description and it'll give you all the information that you need to know. And uh, let's see what you guys can come up with, all right? All right, guys, we're all done. We're wrapped up here. We got everything that we could hauled off. And at the end of the day, ended up being exactly 70 cars. And you ready for this? Total weight, 105 tons, which means we got to check here for 19,400 and some change. Paid 7,500, walked away with 19,700. I feel like we're doing okay. That was a good one. They're not always this easy. Honestly, it's uh, if you're a scrapper, you know that there's highs and lows. 
and we're not full-time scrapper. We're doing this because we've had a couple of cool opportunities pop up to help friends and make a little bit of money while we're doing it. So last scrap job, we're doing really well on. This one just made, what, like 12 grand on? So what's next? What else are we gonna go scrap? So guys, my final words would be this. We're gonna continue to try to figure out this YouTube thing. We're loving it. We're having like an absolute blast making this content. Um, we're gonna continue to try to improve the messaging in our videos, try to improve the communication. And you know what? We're not always gonna get it right, which means we're gonna meet back here, the make it right corner. Who knows? Could be next week, could be next year. I'm trying to be here less often, but 